everyone. Welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Z, kind of an unusual name. We'll ask him about that. And really kind of an unusual setup as well. So welcome Z to the channel. Thank you, Bob. And Z is a bit of an unusual name. How did you come up with that? Well, my name's Steven Zeigler, but uh, Z is a lot easier to remember. So <laughs> I just put Z out there and it seems like people remember Z more than the other. And so you are in a, you're living in your Subaru Outback. Yeah. And you pull in a trailer with some stuff. And how long have you been in it? Four years now. Four years. Yeah. And uh, how's that going? It must be going pretty well. You know, surprisingly well. Uh, I Prior to this, I used to sort of be a big fan of trucks. And... Um, of uh, something, you know, uh, things took a turn for the worse about four years ago, and I had to start all over again. And this is just what was available. It turns out I'll probably never get another vehicle. Uh, I'll just replace this with another Subaru Outback for sure. And how does the towing the trailer go for that? You know, as long as you don't overload it, which I never have, now, most of us think of the idea, of course, you got the trailer to carry a lot of your stuff, but most of us think of the idea of living in a small car as unbearable. But to you, it's become a joy. Well, I'm a long distance hiker. Uh, from, I did the PCT and uh, little bits of the AT and the Continental Divide Trail. So getting a tent was a huge upgrade and then actually having a car as long as you're thinking more in the hiker mentality right. this is a castle this is a luxury <laughs> now if this was unintentional i was going to turn this trailer into a teardrop and i just was using this setup uh for the intern and it turns out that this is much more um you know the modularity is much more functional so I decided against a teardrop and just clear the vehicle out, use that as the sleeping living area. And it's not cluttered with all the stuff that you would normally have in there. And, um, and yeah, it's worked out really wonderful. I mean, you'd really have to pay a lot of money to recreate the same environment that you already have in the car. So um, it was a great money savings too, yeah, which I'm, I'm all about saving money. And you're probably getting yeah. pretty decent gas mileage. I think something about 30, 32. Oh, that's perhaps. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you set up a tent or do you spend most of your time inside the Subaru? Now, the modularity of this allows me to kind of set up multiple types of shelters. So I'll have a tent when the weather's good. Sometimes I could just put these bins down along the side and set the tent up over that and have a nice little riser, which is nice during the summertime. Um, yeah, uh, and then this is almost like a, a shelter pod. So when things get rough, just jump in there and, and you're good to go. I don't know if it was my generation, but we were all raised to, you know. Me too. Yeah. yeah to go out there and, and explore. And play. Yeah, and that play. That was what mom was always saying, go outside and play. Exactly. So, um, you know, after, um, you know, I've, we've talked about this, but I've done a whole bunch of different things. And, um, and I feel really grateful that I can still, I have the health, my health, I can go out and explore. And, uh, you know, just on a very limited, a uh, budget, you know, um, teaching online, things like that. Uh, right, you're not re you're not retirement age yet, so you just have to still have to support yourself. Yeah, yeah, you know, you do whatever, um, you know, whatever is morally <laughs> <laughs> correct. You know, uh, you know, it's you know, it's easy to get by if you don't want a lot of stuff. Um, then, man, your life is so much easier, you know. Uh, you just don't fall into the trap of, you know, stuff. You know, one of your uh, most influential videos on me was the whole idea of like, okay, you're, 
you know, you got to get rid of this stuff now, you know, and a lot of it, although it's precious to you, it's pretty much junk to the rest of the world, you know, and uh, I think that probably, I'm sure that's held us all back to some degree or another. So uh, you, you mentioned um, teaching online. So uh, you have classes online? Yeah, I started teaching Kung Fu online around 1994. And um, I've been offering uh, everything from free lessons uh, to, um, you know, paid subscriptions, stuff like that, you know, the Patreon and all that. But you could find all that at sifuzi.com. Good. And yeah. then go there. So how, how, so do you make videos showing the moves? Yes. Uh, I've, uh, you know, over the years, created hundreds of videos, but I always like to make new videos to pretty much update any information, um, you know, make better videos, uh, maybe reiterate um, information that needs to be said differently. So yeah, for many years I've been putting videos up for, for everyone to learn from. I think it's, it's really valuable that, um, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty small guy and I think it's really valuable to understand uh, uh, self-defense, very practical self-defense. Um, which is really mostly situational awareness, you know, really become a good judge of character and control your environment or move, go, leave the area, you know. So everybody be sure you go out and go and uh, check out his, Z's website and so you can see what he's got there. That's something we should all be, uh, whatever our age, we should be attuned into just taking care of ourselves. And it's a great way of maintaining uh, a level of fitness. So whatever your fitness level is, you can adjust this martial art to your fitness level and then watch it slowly develop and, and get stronger and stronger. You don't have to be as strong as your attacker. You just to be, need to be as strong as you can be. Everyone be sure and go and check out uh, his, these, um Website, give it again, slowly. Sifuzi.com. That's S-I-F-U-Z.com. And stop by and say hi. Be sure and do that. Can we check out your setup? Yeah. You know, the number one question I get over the past four years is what's in the, in the boxes? Let's go take a look. This will be the first. All right. <laughs> So people are always really curious what's in these boxes. Yes, and the number one guess is usually they think I'm hauling fish. Right. Especially if I'm by the ocean. Um, but these are uh, cargo bins uh, that I used to use in a business um, for trade shows. I've never shown anybody what's in these, so this will really be a first. I hope... Uh, it's not too appalling. <laughs> now, this is my refrigerator and just like it was at home, um, yeah, it's a mess. My refrigerator is a mess, but I know what's in it. This is mo mostly soft stuff that can get crushed. This is my um, silverware and pots and pans and stuff. And this is where all the cans uh, and boxes of, of food go. Yeah, it works out wonderful. Yeah, and if you had all this in your rig, that's all there'd be. And you'd have to do a lot of shopping. I can usually supply myself for a month um, with this setup, right. which is nice to not, you know, you can save a lot of gas not having to go in and out of town to resupply. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh. And here um, is predominantly the cold and wet stuff. Uh, this is my water over here, my table, and some extra canvases to, uh, you know, create uh, makeshift shelters of various types. And I don't uh, use the electric ones. Uh, I just, um, you know, try to do my best with the uh, with this cooler. I I do intermit intermittent fasting. Uh -huh. So that means I'm only really eating one meal a day. Um, 
which gives me a lot more energy and uh and whatnot any of you out there doing intermittent fasting you know what i mean um and it saves on food too you're not eating all the time right you know so your body really is looking forward to that one meal you know right. now as we go back i have to make sure that the weight uh, gets lighter and lighter. So this is sort of um, just where I keep the other propane. I keep my solar in here. I have two solar units. It was by mistake, but I, I probably would never uh, go any other way, which is I have a small Jackery, like the 240, I believe, and uh, the Blue Eddy, both um, from your uh, reviews. So boy, two solar units. Um, and then I have this panel, um, uh, which is a QC something. It's the same as the Renergy, uh, real high efficiency, uh, 50 watt panel. Mm -hmm. And then this is a 120 watt, uh, folding panel. Then, you know, I do a, a lot of hiking when I can, um, climbing. Sometimes I do a podcast, uh, called integrity radio. Um, so my microphone is in there. There's my, uh, my, uh, my big tank, my big propane tank that I fill up the little propane tanks with. You know, th this vehicle has over 300,000 miles on it. Wow. And I I'm just so amazed with the Outback, the performance of the Outback, um, 2004. And so, um, I always want to be prepared for what might happen when the thing decides to die. It has every right to die, right. you know? So, it um, served you well. Oh, absolutely. And so I wanted a way, if something happened, especially out in the wilderness, um, be it snow or whatever, how would I get me and my dog out, you know? So, um, I made a pulk. And so this pulk, I just put kayak wheels on it and it becomes a land or snow pulk and I can tow it like a, a wheelbarrow or I can uh, attach a harness system and um, I have some crampons and I can trud through the snow. So this way we're not stuck, you know, if we have to hike 10 miles to civilization, then um, we, we, we bust out the pulk. We'll show you the pulk. Some of you, some folks don't know what a pulk is. Yeah, so, yes. Yeah, I didn't know what a pulk was. Right. <laughs> so this will be this will be a new. Um, now, like I said, everything has to get lighter. So back here is where my reflectix are, um, my uh, my back roll for um, stretching and stuff. Uh, I've got the, uh, my detergents and, and this is, this is a bucket that I can take a shower or a bath in my toilet. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the French might call it. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I, I make sure I have bleach that I use to uh, combine with the water and let it sit in the sun. So it stays nice and clean and doesn't start stinking stuff up. No, oh, and then we got the <laughs> oh, electric scooter. That's a great yeah. idea. Just quick trips around town. Yeah, um, modularity and mobility is the most important thing to a nomad. So what I opted for, and yeah, I'm sure a lot of you do this, is you have different ways. I have a sled, I have a wheelbarrow, uh, a uh, you know a um, a scooter, electric scooter. This gets 30 miles on a charge, does about 18 miles uh, per hour, uh, miles per hour. So um, that's more than fast uh, for me. And I can use, as long as I don't let it go down beyond 50%, I can easily recharge it with my solar setup. And said uh, solar setup, um, you know, I didn't know anything about solar. Whenever I tried to use solar back in the 80s, when I first started um, doing, you know, uh, long distance hikes, uh, the, it just wasn't there yet, right. you know? Um, so I kind of just dismissed the whole market 
until I started seeing your videos. Essentially, this is where all the soft stuff goes. So um, sleeping bags, clothes, um, you know, anything that's soft. And uh, me and the dog, she can rather be up front, especially if she's not smelling too good. She can, I can be separated from her. But as long as she's nice and clean, she can join me here in the back. And this just becomes such an amazing luxury to have all of this space to just lay around any which way, diagonal, whatever, you know. Right. So this is, uh, this is the Polk, and it's a snow sled, basically. Yes. Yeah, I, I got this at a Big Five Sporting. So, uh, and you don't have to use expensive carabiners, but I'm a climber, so I have real nice ones. Um, but you just drill holes so you can run a line. And uh, this way the weight is being pulled by the ropes and not the plastic. And uh, I have a kayak wheels here that's usually used for um, hauling a kayak and the tires are inside there. Uh, so that way if there's no snow, I can just use it um, sort of in the same way you would use a, uh, a wheelbarrow. Right. Yeah. So it, and it uh, comes up and attaches to a waist belt. It, for, yeah, for the snow, then it has, uh, um, there's PVC poles that the rope goes through, attaches to your uh, waist, and um, then you can pull like that. And you're able to pull a lot of stuff, you know, like a couple hundred pounds. Right. And, um, and For winter camping, it's heavy. Well, it's and if and if you get stuck, uh, your vehicle breaks down. I've got so many things that I don't want to just leave out there in the wilderness and come back and find that they've you know all been uh, stolen or vandalized. Yeah. So, um, so it's important for me to be able to take some of the more important things and my dog and be able to carry them all out. Z, thank you so much for sharing your home and your life with us. You've, you've really created an amazing life for yourself. Freedom and, and joy for, in, just engulf your life. Thank you. And, um, and thanks for having me, Bob. Uh, I, I'm really appreciative of all the stuff I've been able to learn from your videos, uh, which just, you know, kept giving me that like life improvement, you know, quality of life. You know, and that's what it's about is quality of life. And, um, you know, uh, to quote somebody I think we're all familiar with, you know, you could have all the luxuries and whatnot, right? Or you can have your freedom. I I'm paraquoting, but I think you folks know who, who said that. And um, now I live by that. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Aloha, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Folks, I know you've been pretty impressed and, and inspired by Z. If so, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.